This writer could hardly work till the age of 30. Each novel and article required enormous effort. Sometimes he was unable to write a single line for three weeks. Sorrow and lack of faith in his own power seized him, and sometimes he had the desire to cry over an empty page. Many eminent novelists he made friends with perceived him for a long time more as a handsome man with muscles rather than with a good mind. He was called Henri René Albert Guy de Maupassant. He was born on August 5, 1850, either in France or in Normandy. His place of birth has not been established for certain. His father, Gustave de Maupassant, a stock exchange dealer from Paris, was reputed to be a refined nobleman, quite a good painter, and a lover of women. Continuing this indulgence in adultery led to the end of his 12-year marriage. Guy's mother, Laure Le Poitevin, moved with her children to the coastal town of Etretat in Normandy, where the children were given absolute freedom. Guy ran across fields and forests, climbed the cliffs, and went fishing with seamen. At the age of 13, he was sent to the seminary in the town of Yvetot, but he could not adapt to the atmosphere of strict discipline that prevailed there. He had conflicts with teachers, ran away several times, and pretended to be ill. At the age of 16, Montpassant was expelled from the seminary for his participation in carousal on the roof of the building. When Montpassant was 17, his mother sent him to the Rouen Lycée. One of his teachers, the poet Louis Boulet, noticed his literary gift and introduced him to the well-known writer Gustave Flaubert. Having read Guy's essays, the maitre exclaimed, Start working, young man. At the age of 19, Montpassant joined Paris University as a faculty member in the law department. A year later, in 1870, the Franco-Prussian War broke out and Guy, like many French, became a soldier. When the French Empire collapsed two months later, he escaped to the forest, lying low there, fighting hunger. After the war, financial constraints made Maupassant unable to continue his studies. He succeeded in getting a job at the Naval Ministry in the Department of Deliveries to the Navy. A salary which was paid only a few months after he had joined was hardly sufficient for him to make both ends meet. Maupassant suffered from poverty in a red tape routine which was tiresome and left little time for his creative activity. He spent six years at this penal servitude, according to his own definition. At the end of 1878, Guy obtained a transfer to the Ministry of Public Instruction. He combined his service with writing. By the age of 30, he had several collections of poems published, had become a contributor to the Le Galois newspaper, and had had a successful premiere of his play in old days. In addition, his short story, Suet Dumpling Butterball, had been published which made Maupassant a celebrity. Around that time, the first signs of his strange disease appeared. He had pain in the right eye, and excitement and increased activity gave way to depression and apathy. Guy took leave from office. It extended up to two years and ended up with his being fired from the Ministry of Public Instruction. In February 1883, the first novel of Maupassant, Une Vie, A Woman's Life, appeared in print, and in two years, Bellamy was published which brought fame in Europe to the writer. Now he dictated the terms of contracts to the publishers. Maupassant's financial conditions improved. He had a villa in Etretat built, and a bit later bought a yacht on which he traveled to the southern countries. Maupassant became popular in the social circles and was a success with ladies. Having been involved with more than 300 women, he got the reputation of an insatiable lover. And only one of them succeeded in making Maupassant think about family. Maupassant, who disliked advertising his private life, kept her name in secret. In the 1880s, he displayed an incredible capacity for work. He wrote six pages a day, working himself to the point of exhaustion. 
He wrote 29 volumes within 10 years. After 40, the writer had hallucinations. He saw a double of himself. The doctors found that Maupassant had symptoms similar to those of his mother, neurasthenic and syphilis. The newspapers, which did not like the writer for his secretiveness, started to discuss his disease publicly and even spread rumors about his madness. It was the last straw for Maupassant. On January 1, 1892, he became delirious. In a fit of madness, he tried to cut his throat with a knife and throw himself out of the window, but his butler saved him. The rider was taken to a mental clinic where after spending the two most horrible years of his life, he passed away a month before his 43rd birthday. In his speech at Maupassant's grave, Emile Zola said, We, those who knew him, will keep his bright and tragic image in our hearts, and those who will know him thanks to his literary works will love him for his eternal song of love he sang to life. <laughs>